This AI tool is crazy. My thumbnails used to look like this. Now they look like this. Or this one here and this one here. These are all images that I have used with an AI that I can train the model with my own images and then prompt it to give me any type of image that I want. And the best part is it's super cheap to do. It doesn't cost $10,000 per thumbnail like what Mr. Beast pays or the $25 to $300 that you could find on any of these YouTube freelancing platforms. It doesn't cost anywhere near that. In fact, they tell us right here that for a dollar, you can run this model approximately 29 times and get 29 images for approximately a dollar. Does that sound cool? Well, in this video, I'm going to be diving into this entire process. We're going to talk about how to set up your AI account and train the model. We're going to talk about what types of photos to use to train the model with your own face. I'm going to show you a secret tool that not many people know about that crafts the perfect prompt formula for your image generation prompts inside of the model. I'm going to give you one key phrase that ensures it creates images that look just like you. I'm going to give you the top five expressions for YouTube thumbnails. And then once you've nailed this entire process, I'm going to show you how you can 10x that productivity with automations as well. So if you don't know me yet, my name is Mitch Asa, and I've built a number of businesses over the last 10 years. And all of those businesses had a YouTube channel, but we never focused on it. We never focused on it because of the really high costs to create videos, edit videos, and then of course, thumbnails as well. Thumbnails are arguably the most important part of that process when you create a video, because if you don't create a great thumbnail, then no one's going to click on the video. So no matter how good the video is, they're never going to watch. Up until now, you had to pay anywhere between $300 to $10,000 to get a thumbnail created for your YouTube videos. But now we have the opportunity to turn our old thumbnails into new, really amazing AI generated thumbnails that look just like ourselves, but also just like the $10,000 designer YouTube thumbnails that Mr. Beast is using, for example. So once you've trained your own model, then you won't have to worry about Photoshop as much anymore. You won't have to worry about finding a designer and making sure they get that back to you on time. You won't run out of different ideas. You have an endless stream of ideas that you can use. You'll be able to create 29 different images for a dollar so that you can test each different thumbnail for your upcoming YouTube videos to really make sure that you're going to get as much exposure as possible to each of those videos. And the best part is you can set this entire thing up in the next few minutes. And I'm going to show you how in this video. And if you're still not convinced, then if you look at the thumbnail and title tips from YouTube directly, they say here, fun fact, 90% of the best performing videos have custom thumbnails. That's why it's so critical to create your own thumbnails for these. You don't want to be going into Canva, pulling up a template that everybody is using and just changing a few words and then uploading your image on top because everybody's seen those thumbnails before. We want to go the extra mile. We want to create highly captivating and clickbaity thumbnails so that people click on them and start to engage in your video immediately. The truth is thumbnail is one of the most important parts of your video to ensure that it has success. If you don't get that first click, then you don't have the opportunity to bring the person in to get them hooked and then to get them started on your video. But the sad truth is that most people focus 99% of their time on creating the video, editing the video, uploading the video, making sure all the descriptions are good. And they spend just 1% of the time on the thumbnail. Using this method and now very affordably it allows us to create as many different thumbnails as we want to test and iterate and make sure that we're getting as many views on our videos as possible. So here's exactly what we're going to cover today in this video. We're going to dive into the three steps to creating epic AI YouTube thumbnails. And first, I'm going to show you how to train your AI model. I'll show you how to sign up for your account, how to get started, the right model to choose, and then some of the photos that you'll need to upload in order to train that model. Next, we're going to dive into the settings of the AI model. So once you have your model trained, you then have different settings and outputs that you're trying to create. And there's a few key settings in there that we need to make sure we're changing and adapting in order to get the best outputs. And finally, I'm going to give you the thumbnail prompt formula and tool that I've been using to create amazing YouTube thumbnails over the last couple of weeks that have elevated the quality of thumbnails on my YouTube channel, which just enhances the brand. But it's also starting to result in much higher click-through rates on the videos as well, which is the main point of being able to test so many different thumbnails. Plus at the end, I'm going to show you how you can get access into the next product lab session that I have, where we're going to talk about how to take this manual process that we're learning here today and automating that into a workflow so that not only do your YouTube assets get done, like your title, your description, your first comment, but then we can also automate the creation of three, four, five, even 10 different types of YouTube thumbnails so that it's all completely done in a fully automated way using AI automation as well. 
let's dive in. Now you'll be happy to know that the secret to realistic AI photos has nothing to do with having a fancy camera. It's about providing their AI model with a host of different images and different lights and different facial expressions. So some of the images that I went and uploaded, a lot of them were selfies. So these types of images here or ones that I just set up on a tripod. Others were from a simple YouTube thumbnail photo shoot that I create, that I did a while back. But you can see that the quality of the images are not that great, right? Like the, the lighting could have been better, all of those types of things. But providing it with a whole host of different images like this and ensuring that your head is pointing in different directions, making different expressions, then the AI will be able to learn from that and from that will create as many of the different types of expressions that you need. And there are really only a few expressions that you need to make. The happy expression has been shown to be the most common and probably gets attracts the attention the most for most people. Calm is also an interesting one, surprised, disgusted, confused, and sad. So these are all probably the main expressions that you would want to create when you are prompting the AI model yourself, but also they're the expressions that you want to make in order to train the AI model as well. So once you have your folder of 40 or more images that you're ready to train the model, there are two websites that I like that you can actually begin to use this model on. And foul.ai is the one that I'm going to go through. There's, but there's also replicate.com and using their Flux Dev Laura Trainer. So both of these platforms are basically aggregators where they pull in all of the different models that are out there from image generation, video generation, and more. And they allow you to choose what model that you want in order to run different automations. And specifically, they make it very easy to use an API, which is then how we can automate most of these workflows at the end of the day. But in this example, I'm going to be using foul.ai. And when you sign up for an account, you then get access into those models. So you sign up for an account, you fund that account, and you can find plenty of documentation on their website of how to do that. Then we're looking for the model Flux LoRa Portrait Trainer. Once you click into that, you'll come to a page that looks just like this. And then once you come to this page, then you have all the information here that you need on how to get started. So you can see over here on the right that I have my training history here. So when I come into the dashboard and I run, want to run new images, I just come across to this Run Inference button, and I can start prompting it with the trained model that I created from the training history. But you won't have that yet if you're getting started for the first time. So once you come here, you then need to add your images from that file that we were looking at earlier. So you would add in all of your images that you need there, and I would recommend at least 40. I did trial 20 initially, and I'm definitely getting way better responses from having twice as many from having 40. So you do need to be warned that when you are training the model, it does use a much larger amount of credits. So I think I use maybe 15 to $20 in credits to train the model itself. But once the model is trained, then the image generation component, you get approximately 29 images for a dollar, which is pretty insane. So once you have your images, you would upload all of your images here, and then you want to give it a trigger phase. So you want to create a phrase that allows you to add it into the prompts themselves, but you don't want it to be any natural language or word that exists currently. So for me, I just use Mitch A. So anytime I want to use my training data inside an image, then I just need to use that within the prompt so that the AI then knows what to do. There are additional settings here. When we were doing the training, we didn't touch that. We were playing around with the settings inside of the prompts, which I'll get to next. But here we just went with the normal settings and then we hit start. Now, when you do that, it'll take a few minutes, maybe five, 10 minutes, depending on how many images you have created. And then it will show over here that it's running. And then when it's completed, it will tell you and you will now be able to run that inference over here. So now that we're in the inference, you'll see that it uses that trigger word or that trigger phrase here in the prompt already so that we know that we need to add this into the prompt. Now, before we do get started, let's just check out some of these other settings here. So there's a scale here and we've played around with this a little bit and it's around waiting for how close you want it to be. We found one is actually the right way to do it. Then if you open up this drop down menu, this is where you can then change your image size. So if you're going to be creating YouTube videos, for example, you need to go landscape 16 by nine so that it will create the right dimensions for you when it creates the output. So there are more settings here like inference steps, seed, guidance scale, all of those types of things which you can play around with. We found that just sticking to the settings that are here right now and the weights that are here right now actually performs best. The only thing that we do change down here once we've done landscape is that I actually like to have four outputs per prompt. So obviously we're going to move through credits a whole lot more, but for me, you know, spending a dollar to get 29 different thumbnails 
is absolutely mind-blowing. I would spend $20 to get as many as possible, no problems per video. So I like to get four images every single prompt so we can pick and choose the right ones. So that's basically the settings. And this part is the easy part. Once you run it, then they'll be sitting in the request. They'll show up over on the right-hand side here. But the, the real special source, the secret to making sure all of this runs properly comes from developing a great prompt formula. So let's dive into that now. The perfect thumbnail prompt comes down to seven elements. And if you miss any of these seven elements, then you're not going to get the prompt that you desire. And the way that I figured this out was inside the GPT store inside of ChatGPT. And you can simply just search for some of the AI image models that are out there like Flux or like Midjourney. And there are pre-built GPTs that enhance an idea that you have. So for example, one that I started using probably more than a year ago now was for Midjourney. And I really love this one because it takes a simple idea and then it turns it into something way bigger and better and it makes sure it matches the style and pulls together all of the important information so that the image that is generated is much better than the initial prompt and is very detailed in terms of what you can get from it. So that's a really great example. I use basically all the ones that I've been creating so far. I've been using the mid-journey prompt and then I just remove a couple of little pieces that are specific to mid-journey. But you can also find other ones for the flux model, for example. So before I dive into the elements of what makes up these image prompts and how these image prompts are actually working let's just do a test between the mid journey one and then the flux one to see what type of images they output so you can see here the mid journey one adds in a few parameters at the end that are specific to mid journey so the ar 4.5 version 6.0 we don't need that inside of here and then we don't need this first section here I just do a quick check to make sure that it's not giving me any extra information. Like often it tries to make me no longer bored, which is pretty funny and fun, but I don't really want that to happen inside of the prompt. So I just remove any of that. And if there's anything that doesn't make sense, then I would remove that as well. So once we're happy with that, then we'll just do a quick run. And we can see now, I mean, it's made me look much older than what I am, but it's, it's pretty funny actually. And uh, let's actually do a better version. So let's do the landscape. And let's go number of images and let's increase the inference step. So the inference steps are basically pulling more data from the training data. So let's push that up a little bit and let's run this one one more time. While that's running, I'm going to copy this flux prompt plus where I added the exact same prompt up here and it gave me this one. And we're just going to compare and see how different both of those are. So these ones are pretty close, right? Like much better. These two on the right hand side are, are fairly accurate in terms of my face the ones on the left not so much so that's pretty interesting now let's go and just add this one here and let's hit run on this one so these uh, this prompt is probably done the exact same thing so on the left hand side they're not so close on the right hand side much closer these ones look a bit scary let's see if we can have a bit more fun with it so let's go mitch a as the joker with a fun background around the ai so let's see what this one creates versus the flux version. So now we've got this one here from the mid journey prompt. It's giving me a little bit more hair with a receding hairline up the top there. And let's try now this one from flux. This one's much more on point, but it doesn't really look like me at all. You can kind of see some similarities there, but uh, the prompt has probably nailed it a little bit closer. We just need to play on it a little bit. I mean, it's a little bit scary to be honest. But you can see some of the cool things you can do. Like you play around with that prompt for a little while and build that out to get it looking a little bit like you. And then you could add that into a different background or a different part of a YouTube thumbnail, which is pretty cool. So what I did was like, okay, what are these two tools actually doing? What's Flux Prompt Plus doing? What's Mid Journey doing? And they're actually breaking it down into seven elements to create the perfect AI image prompt. And the reason why we want to know this is because when we go to the next step of now building this into our automation, we want to give the AI some consistent prompts or consistent uh, descriptions for each of these seven elements. So number one are physical traits. It's typically starting with a physical trait like a bored middle-aged businessman or a young woman with long flowing red hair or a muscular warrior with a thick beard. Like that's generally the starting point for the prompts. The next one is then the pose. So it's saying sitting with fingers touching lightly at the tips, forming a small triangle below. So it's going through what pose does the 
person or the AI image need to embody. The next one is then the expression. So is it serious? Is it curious? Is it confident? Is it happy? Like I said, most of them should probably be happy based on some of the research that is out there. Then it goes into the background. So what's in behind the actual person? So a futuristic cyberpunk city at night, a dark moody office, a bright green screen background. Then we can go into lighting. So cinematic lighting, moody sci-fi lighting, high contrast lighting. Further detail, so hyper-realistic skin texture with visible pores, sharp reflections in the subject's eyes, subtle dust particles, and then equipment. And this is one that's actually changed it a lot for me is like giving it some equipment and like types of lenses to project that image from. When I add these in, these equipment set sentences at the end, for some reason it just creates a way better and more accurate prompt than if I didn't add them in. So you can see that in these versions, right? Like we didn't add in anything about the camera here in these uh, this, this particular one from Flux, but the mid-journey one did. So it got my face a little bit more accurate, even though we're then overlaying it with the Joker and, and like the elements of the Joker as well. So adding this specific section in is actually being very valuable for me to get them as realistic as possible when we're actually creating those images. Now, the good news is if you don't like either of those GPTs, there's a whole bunch more for Flux and Mid Journey and all of the other ones that are out there as well, which you can take and you can begin to play around with and find the ones that work best for you. But ultimately coming into your requests here, it's just playing around for a little while to figure out what works best for you and your brand, what you're trying to convey. I've generated probably hundreds of images by now trying to figure out the best solutions or the, the best variations for me in order to get them right for my brand. Now, a quick little hack that I've actually been using as well is sometimes it's better to do it in two phases, which is generate the image or the face of the person first on like a green screen so that you can import it into say Canva and then background remove the green screen and then overlay it on top of a second image that you generate. And then that creates a much more dynamic and like gives the images a little bit more depth. So you can actually do that as well if you are wanting to. But like I said, like once you've got this system down, then you don't want to be doing this inside of the playground, inside of foul.ai or replicate.com all the time. You want to be automating this. And that's exactly what we've done inside of this make.com automation. So what happens now is we have a workflow inside of Airtable that generates our YouTube titles, our descriptions, our first comment and all of those things that happen to go around what is needed to put a YouTube video up online. And then now we've built this second automation that pulls some information about the video, creates a prompt that we can send into Fal, improves that prompt based on, on everything that we just talked about inside of the seven elements of the perfect prompt, and then feeds it in, pulls, creates the image inside of Fal, pulls the image back out, and then places the thumbnail or the final images, we can do up to four images, remember, per prompt, back inside of Airtable so that when I am ready to upload the video, I don't have to go into another dashboard, create the prompts, it's all there for me, ready to go. So if you do want to learn more about that, then we're doing that inside of the Massive Moves product lab session coming up on Thursday, Feb 27 Australian time, which is probably Wednesday US time. We're going to talk about how to actually build that workflow. So as soon as you upload your transcript into Airtable, for example, it creates all of the assets that you need in order to upload that video onto YouTube, including a whole bunch of thumbnails that you can test, which is going to be super cool. The best way to do this is to do it all manually first, figure out the right training, figure out the headshots that you need to train the model to get it exactly how you want it to figure out the way that you need to set up your settings, create the different prompts, figure it all out manually first. And then once you have it done manually, then automating it with make.com or some of these other automation tools is the fastest way to take your productivity from a five out of 10 to a 10 out of 10. And that's exactly what we talk about here on this channel. So if you're not subscribed yet, subscribe and then probably watch this next video to dive deeper into automation as well. See you in the next one.